If you're ready to walk in authority, help finding your purpose and destiny, empowering you to live today. And We're teaching on the subject, fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith. Um, we're going to dovetail right off of this subject today as we conclude it. And we're going to move into a subject that I believe that if you embrace it, it will give you revelation. It'll give you revelation. And if you catch that revelation and simply walk in it, that you'll find that you will become someone that God is looking for in this hour to entrust that he might bless to bring in the end times. Say it with me, if you will. God is looking to use people. And you got to understand that uh, um, there's not a lot of people right now that he can use. And here's why. And this is what God gave me before I went on vacation. And, and I had been dealing with it for about the last three months as God resolves some things in my life before up to now as we're moving in to this, this last phase, if you were, of this particular dispensation before the outpouring of what I believe to be the return of Christ. There's two things. Say honor and respect. This is what the Lord gave me. Honor. We honor by giving what we have produced from our lives we honor by giving what we have by what we have produced from our lives honor we honor when I display honor I give my time my money gifts talents and abilities which is the produce of my life which is the produce of my life it is what I have produced out of my life that I have trusted God to produce out of my life. The next thing is respect. Respect is by what we honor. I respect what I honor. Where there is no honor, there can be no respect. And so respect, I will always respect, give reverence to, bow, give homage to, always back off Humility, make sure that my humility goes before what I respect. Respect is what you show towards what you honor. Honor is what you give as a production of what has come out of your life. So I want to make sure that I maintain respect because respect is the source of where my honor comes from. The moment I quit respecting something, I limit my ability to honor. I limit my production rate in my life. Well, we're going to show you some scripture on this. The reason most people do not succeed in their lives is because there's a lack of honor in their lives. And there's a lack of giving in their life. But the reason there's a lack of giving, it's a direct circle. They're, they're directly proportional. is because there's a lack of respect. If you do not have anything that you respect in your life, I will tell you where your level of honor is. If I can show you where your level of honor is, I'll prove to you your productivity. I'll prove to you what you produce. Now, the unfortunate part, when I do not have anything that I can respect or anyone that I respect in my life, the honor in my life begins to diminish because now I am not a giver. I'm a taker. The very nature of who God created me to be becomes perverted. That's why people look for the hookup. See, then I want to use someone else's honor. I want to use what someone else has produced rather than work and produce my own. <sighs> because I lack respect. Not only of what I give, but now I, the worst part is I lack self-respect. When I do not respect others, is first because I have no respect. So, point one that was brought up, I'll just review this for a moment. 
Uh, it was brought up on yes, uh, last session. I cannot make a strong decision then contradict it with my mouth. You said that that's a form of schizophrenia. What is schizophrenia? It, it, you've got to understand, you're going to either listen to one voice or the other, a godly voice, or you're going to listen to a satanic voice. Let's talk about what a godly voice is. Godly voice is when you read the word. When God's word speaks to you, that's his voice. When you hear the inner witness of what God has already said to you through his word and through the pastor, someone that you respect and honor. And thirdly is your pastor. You need someone that you can respect and honor. Not that they are perfect, but they become a barometer. They become a measuring to to where you are. Because, see, if you cannot respect and honor someone in the earth realm, you definitely cannot respect and honor whom you have not seen. This is why, why we have an epidemic in our society of productivity. Because we have a lack of honor. If that lack of honor comes from the home, we have a lack of respect for our parents and our elders. Where there is no respect, there can be no honor. Oh, you're going to get this. Now, this is real interesting because as the Spirit of the Lord began dealing with me, I now find out why a lot of people in the church, their faith does not work. Your faith cannot work a part of respect and honor. Where there is no respect and honor, there can be no work of faith. Because faith worketh by the word. <laughs> faith worketh by the word. So let's go back. How does God speak in three ways? One, by his word. Two, by the inner witness, which is the Holy Spirit within me, bearing witness to what his word says. And three, by a pastor. And a pastor is somebody who has been set in your life, a set overseer. As a matter of fact, they're a gift to you for you to honor and to respect. And, 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 and if I might use myself as being your pastor, not just honoring me and respecting Pastor Chris for Pastor Chris's sake, but honoring me and respecting me for the word's sake. Are you with me? All right? In old biblical times, they called them seers. They called them seers. Go with me to Hebrews 10 and 23. 10 and 23. Hebrews 10 and 23. Say amen when you have gotten there to Hebrews 10 and 23. Amen. Are you there? Listen to what it says. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that hath promised. He is faithful that has promised. Now when we talk about faith, what it really is, is putting honor and respect into action. I, when God gave me this, I looked at this and I said, Lord, is it this simple? And he says, yes. In Proverbs, we're teaching on Proverbs, and we've learned in Proverbs already that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What does that look like? Where you honor and respect God, that's where you receive wisdom to know what to do. So look at it in reverse. If I do not fear and honor God, honor and respect him, then I don't get wisdom, which is on knowing what to do. 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 Amen? Now, go with me to Hebrews 13 and 17. Let's look at honor and respect as it relates to faith in the natural realm. Hebrews 13 and 17. Listen to what it says here. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. See, that's the respect part. And submit yourselves. For they watch for your, they watch for your, this is where you develop your soul, your mind, your heart, your intellect. This is where you develop the degree of respect and honor. They watch for your soul as they must give an account, that they would give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with, for that would be unprofitable for you. Now what he's talking about is bishops over your soul or pastors over your soul. 
So God gives you a bishop. God gives you a pastor. And let's put religion. Let's put bad experiences in the church. Let, let's just put it aside. I don't want anything from you. I'm not trying to talk you out of anything. I'm not trying to coerce you in becoming a member of this church. Because if you really don't sense a, 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 a spirit and a uh, anoint within your spirit of unity and, and, and of following the Lord through honor and respect, then this wouldn't be your ministry. But if it is, then I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me carefully. So you must understand you need someone in your life that will oversee for you. Now, now watch what I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to say here. Not just so that you can honor and respect me, but somebody that honors and respect God that understand that they must honor God, must honor God, gives what comes out of their life to God continuously, infinitum for you. See, see, there are a lot of people that will share things, talk to you about things, tell you about other stuff. Remember I said there are two voices. The other one is the media, it's music, and other people. See, God speaks to you in a manner, and the devil speaks to you in a manner. But you need someone that understands that they will give an account for you. I, uh, I, I made this statement, and, and I think when I made it, sometimes people don't quite understand. I have a gift of goodbye. You choose to leave. I love you. I'll pray for you, but I will release you. Now, now here's, here's why. I want you to understand this. This is not a bad thing, negative thing, or arrogant thing. I'm just understanding because when you are here and I'm praying for you, interceding, I got your back if you don't have mine. Do you understand what I'm saying? You could talk about me. I'll never say what I know about you. No, the cows will come home with, do with dual bells on. I will never say a word. And here's why. Because I've got to give an account for you. As long as you are here, I must give an account for you. You, you see what I'm saying? But this is why Hebrews 13 and 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you, for they watch for your souls, for they must give an account for you. See, not everybody is willing to give an account for you. Oh, oh there are a lot of folk that will rule you. But if you're getting ready to rule anything, understand you must give an account for it. How do I give an account, Pastor? We all, where you work and what you do, you give an account for the money you make. Why? Because God says, I want some honor. I made a statement a few weeks ago. I don't know how many of you got this, but I said, you know, uh, I have children, you have children, children in the world, but I want something back. Did anybody, anybody remember me making that statement? Right, yeah, I want something back. And I just, I just don't want, oh, I love you. What have you done for me lately? I mean, you know, I, I want something back. Now, I didn't say that because it was just something selfish or I need something. I said that because I understand what respect and honor is. By you giving something back to me as, as your parent, then watch this. You show honor through your respect, and now God can bless you because that is the action of faith. Oh, this amazes me. I, I got to come down here. This amazes me because we talk about subjects in the church all the time. And then we come to church and, and, it, and it just, I'm just floored to see people struggle and go through things and, 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 and don't understand why. Go to James. We're going to work this like a Cajun on a neck bone. James chapter 1. Are you in James chapter 1? Listen to know what he says in James chapter 1, verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the what? The trying of your faith. And so the trying of your faith, what, what does that look like? The trying of your faith is to see your respect, to see your honor. It's not easy to respect. 
and it's not easy to honor. Because we're dealing with what we call a human fact. Because there's times when individuals are not necessarily, in your eyes, worthy of your honor. And worthy of your respect. See, it doesn't it take, take a rocket scientist to find out what's wrong with something. It takes a scientist, someone that has background information and a willingness to understand and get some information and knowledge on why it's not working. Oh, oh yeah, let me break it down. The washing machine, it's not working. Your wife walks to you and she says, honey, the washing machine is not working. You say, how do you know? The water won't go nowhere sitting in the washing machine. And then you get on him for not fixing it. Well, I'm sorry, you're not the rocket scientist because you figured out it was broken. Now, where they're going to take some knowledge and information is to figure out how to fix it. So because you know people who are not perfect, who may be set in a position of respect and honor, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to find out why you should not respect them or honor them. That may be your reason for not washing the clothes. I found something broke. Your position, your blessing is finding out how to still honor him and respect him. In other words, how do I wash these clothes without the machine? Because as my husband, I want to clean the clothes. Now, women, before you go sexist on me, just listen. <laughs> now, as your husband, you want to fix the washing machine to make her life easier because you want to exchange the honor and respect that she gives you. This is why he says in Ephesians chapter 5, submit yourselves one to another. How? In honor and respect. It's a reciprocating thing. Oh. We're in a relationship, Lifeway family. Let's go here, family. If I am your pastor, I should be worthy of your respect and honor. And I should reciprocate it right back to you because I want to watch this. Cause your lives to be profitable and not unprofitable. But notice what he says here in James. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will work patience. Sometimes when you honor and respect in someone by faith, and that's why it's in here. Sometimes when you honor and respecting someone by faith, you don't see the manifestation of the honor. Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm respecting them right now, but I don't see no honor out of it. And see, we live in a society, I want my cookies now. Give me my cookies now. (laughs) And you know, God will, God will watch what we do. He says, but let patience have her perfect work. Ah, there it is perfect work that means you don't discount how much you're going to respect until which time your honor comes remember i said honor is what anybody write that down what did i say honor is the it's the giving of what we there it is brother honor is the what it's the giving of what i produce in my life now you got to understand whether you want to respect and honor or not god is looking for it out your life We don't get nothing else, get this. God wants some honor and respect out your life. If there is no honor and no respect out of your life, God can't do anything with you. Because that's how faith works. Without faith, it is M. M to please who? But he is a rewarder of those that. So how do I see God by faith? I can't get to him any other way. I can't get to him on my own terms, on how I feel, what I'm going through, the family I was raised in, my situation right now. God says, uh uh-uh, honor and respect. Honor and, this is why he fights our children. This is why he fights this generation so much. Not to honor and not respect. Because if he can take honor and respect from them, he has taken everything. Listen to me, people. Everything, blessings, grace, 
and mercy follows honor and respect. There is someone God, God actually spoke this to me just, just this morning. And, you know, the Father, he speaks to me about things that's not even on my mind. He told me, I want you to extend what someone is doing for you a little longer. And, and I says, what do you mean? He says, because I'm trying to cause breakthrough to happen in their life, but if they stop honoring you and respecting you, I have no reason to continue right now with them. You're the only thing, whether they know it or not, to honor and respect in their life. You're the last thing left. You, you have no clue, no clue to how important this is to God. How many of us say we love God? We worship God. We praise God. Guess what you just said? You honor and respect Him. Now, how do we think we can just utter that out with our lips? Go back to point one, please. How can I just, uh, you know, just, you know, verbalize that out my lips and there's no corresponding action? Point one, please put point, uh, I'm sorry, point two, please put point two back up there. My confession must be backed up with a strong decision. Well, what's my decision? To honor and respect. All right, let's use this another way. Go back to James chapter 3. 1 verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience, verse 4, have her perfect work, that you might be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. In other words, I don't want anything in the action of respect, because that's not the moment of exchange. The moment of exchange is in honor, not in respect. Respect is the sowing part. Honoring is the reaping part. Ah. Uh. You guys with me? I'm going to say that again. Respect is the sowing. Honoring is the reaping. Where there is no respect, there can be no honor. Where there's no sowing, there can be no reaping. I'm trying to break this down another way you can get this. The reason he says that let patience have a perfect work that you might become complete, entire, wanting nothing. In other words, you got to be patient in your sowing. Patient in your respecting. Because oftentimes, the devil will rise up in what you respect to try to show you why the washing machine isn't working. Well, pastor could have done this a little bit better. Well, pastor, when he asked us to do this, he, he didn't smile. <laughs> in other words, you didn't see the spin cycle. You know, I, he washed the clothes, but he didn't rinse them. You know, I mean. Well, you look hard enough, you're going to find out something you don't like about me. It might be the way I walk. You don't like my knock knees. I'm sorry. No, seriously. It's not hard to find out what you don't like with someone. My wife, I don't like everything about my wife. She doesn't like everything about me. But it does not dissolve the fact, resolve the fact that we should not respect each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I think if it was based on how I act, she would have left me a long time ago. I'm sorry, you came to the Church of Truth. She had, she's had so many reasons to buck and run. I ain't an easy person to live with. And, 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 and it's not just because I have high standards. Sometimes I'm just a little curt, blunt, you know, and, you know, I always smile. And, what you call it, SNS? What is it, babe? What's that essence? Speak and smile. I don't always speak and smile. Sometimes I speak, I leave the other ass out. And, you know. <laughs> see, see. So she could have used that as an excuse. Well, you know, he don't, he don't respect me. He don't like me. He don't treat me the way I want to be treated. Huh? See, we stayed married as long as we have. I can speak myself definitely. And I think for her as well, because I made a vow. Uh, now that, that, I know that's not an unpop, that's not a popular thing today. But your vow, be, whether you know it or not, and not just marriage, but, but things, simple things. Well, I'll be there, I'll see you at three, and you don't show up to 430. There are certain people I knew 
that knew I wouldn't be here, and I knew they wouldn't be at church next last Sunday. I knew they'd find, whether it was their family or something, they'll find some excuse not to be here. You, got, you fail to understand, though, it's not what you do in my presence, but it's what you do in my absence. Okay, let's break it down with God. It's not what you do for God when it's easy to do it. It's what you do for God when it's not easy. Huh? And I understand Mr. Rob and Mr. Sudo minister great works. You could have got something out of either one. Why? It was the word. It's the word. Deacon Rick, I know he's a good teacher. You wasn't here Wednesday, you missed it. If any of you lack wisdom, he said, if you don't understand this, you haven't gotten what you need from God to live. Wisdom. Wisdom is what you honor and what you respect in. That's why we're teaching on, uh, on Bible study. We're teaching a verse by verse, chapter by chapter, discourse on wisdom. At the end of the day, it's all about honor and respect. When you get your respect down, you won't have a problem in honoring. Because it'll be in you to give out of the productivity or the production of your life. And it's when you give, you automatically receive. Let me tell you something. You, earth couldn't stop it if it wanted to. You couldn't stop. I, I, I am a giver. But I'm a giver because I'm a respecter. Right. I respect God and I respect people. I respect God and I respect people. I even have people who are close to me sometimes. They, they see people taking advantage. They understand people doing things. And they say, Pastor, why, why do you steal? It, it ain't that I don't know what they're doing. It's just that I have a degree of respect for myself. So if I have a degree of respect for myself, I cannot just disrespect you. Watch this. If I respect your husband, I'm going to respect your wife. I don't care how she act. Because she a part of you. If I respect the wife, I'm going to respect the husband. They one and the same. Even when he ain't acting right. And then watch this. If I get to the point where I've got to disrespect you, goodbye. See, that's where the release comes in. So you release what you can't respect. As long as there's not a vow attached to it. But make sure your releasing is not an excuse to get out the vow. Your job. Respect your boss. Well, you just don't know how she is. Got nothing to do with it. You made a vow. You signed a contract. You work for that company. That don't give you, that don't give you a reason to bring home extra paper, pencils. <laughs> they don't know. I worked overtime. They don't pay me. I'm going to at least take this home. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Budget on your time sheet. Lazy. Doing other stuff. How many of you talk on your cell phones while you're at work? Privately, you're stealing your feet. You're stealing that man's time. You're stealing that woman, that company's time. Well, Pastor, when, when should I talk on it? Break, lunchtime. Oh, it's quiet up in here. I think that one was right next to time. You don't like when I talk about time. Oh, yeah. That computer, get off of it. You ain't got no business surfing. You ain't at the beach. You on company time. That's disrespectful. And then your supervisor got to tell you, hey, stay off the phone. Stay off the computer. That's disrespectful. See, and here, here's my example. Because you're disrespecting them, you're not giving them what they deserve and honor at that company. And that's why you're going to always be in bondage to the company. If that company ever closed, what you going to do? Because you don't have a harvest to pick off of. You don't have a harvest to go back to of your own. Because you was enslaved to the lender. Because you yourself chose not to have honor and respect. Oh, this is some good teaching right here. 
Somebody getting ready to keep their job.